Um, all righty. Hi, everybody. This is Craft Blend again with another book review. Uh, we have Daniel as always. Hello, Daniel. <laughs> and then we also have a guest, which is our friend Jackie. Do you want to be called Jackie or Jacqueline? Jackie's fine. Jackie's fine. Okay. <laughs> we also have our guest, which is our friend Jackie, and we're going to be talking about Gideon the Ninth. Yes, indeed. Oh, I love that you have it physically. <laughs> we try to. Sometimes I don't though. I'll have it like on Yeah, no, sometimes computer. we don't have it physically, yeah. But it's it was an attempt. Um alrighty, so uh is there anything you would like to say to everybody out there? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Yes, we're putting you on the spot. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Uh, hey guys. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about uh, you and your reading habits, what you particularly like, kind of books you like, things like that. Oh, sure. So, um, I mean, I love to read. I think it's a great outlet to kind of get yourself away from reality a little bit. So what I like to read mainly um, is just a lot of fluffy, happy things. Uh, mainly romance uh, and and romance in all the genres sci-fi um, you know horror which doesn't always happen sometimes you don't really have romantic horror that much but sometimes thrillers can end happily um, I mean as long as it ends happily I pretty much read it okay. um, and um, I mean yeah as 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 long as it'll bring me a little bit of joy I'll give it a shot all right. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. All right. So the first thing we're going to talk about is basically what is the book about? So I'll go ahead and talk about the synopsis of the book. Um, basically, Gideon the Ninth is a sci-fi. It is centered around this new kind of um, it's in space from what I understand. And <laughs> it is also um there's basically an an emperor that has gathered all of these necromancers into one place. Oh, Jackie disappeared. Oh, there she goes. She's back. <laughs> so, um, essentially, this emperor gathers these necromancers all in one place, and what they do is that they're supposed to become what they call in the book lictors. So, this is, I guess, another level okay, of okay. We pronounce are. it the same. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And um, basically what they do is they're put into this house. They're told you are essentially given free reign of this location. And your whole purpose is just to become a lictor. And they each of the necromancers have a cavalier, which is a person who is um, uses a rapier as their defense. And their, their whole purpose is to defend the um, necromancer. And basically they team up and that's what they're supposed to do um and i think that's pretty much like without giving away anything else that's pretty much what the book is about yeah. yeah so going into that um though i heard about this book through other people i was on a discord and i heard them talking about it and one person was really excited about it and the way she described it was lesbian necromancers in space and i was like that sounds fascinating <laughs> so i looked it up and i wanted to read it it sounded really interesting so that's where i heard about the book and then i shared it with you guys and we all decided to read it so hopping into ratings uh i know that we are all in very vastly different spaces when it comes to rating so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and start i did give it a four um i was it's not a perfect four though because again goodreads we've talked about this daniel goodreads doesn't let you do like half stars and things like that for me if i were to really categorize it'd probably be like a 3.6 3.8 I wouldn't completely give it a four, but I ended up giving it a four in the long run because I did um, end up enjoying it more than I thought I was going to. Um, so that's my rating. Daniel, what was yours? Mine's is a three. Um, yeah, three. We're just going with ratings first. Okay. So a three. Yeah. Jackie? Yeah, I also gave it a three, but but I mean, if I could give it a really specific rating, I'd probably give it like like a 2.8 or something like that. Yeah, I would agree. Okay. I'll be with right, there cool. too. Okay, so let's go into it. Um, all right, let's see. 
One of the first questions I have, so I think this is probably going to be the biggest point of contention. What did you think of the author's writing style? <laughs> okay, I guess. Um, ah, the right. <laughs> I tried to like tell myself that. Okay. So, no, I mean, give your honest opinion. This is opinion. So, what you no, I know. Of course. It's just, just I'm trying about. not. It's because as you know, older dad, you know, would have been like much harsher, but I'm trying to be like less harsh, at least with metaphors. Um, I, the writing is not horrible. I know I always say this in some episodes. It's not, it's not basic. It's not bad. The only writing part I would say is a little weird is um, the dialogue. I I feel like the dialogue may be like what I originally wanted to say was like 12 year old humor sometimes with a lot of cursing. So, you know, at least dialogue wise, not always, but I just like, but um, there's a lot of imagination and a lot of descriptions and it's written well, but there's no, not cohesion. That would be the wrong word. It's just, there's too much to be expanded within the writing that it loses a reader. It's like the same way we have, me and Heather, we have talked about before with like Stephen King or Neil Gaiman, that so much is so flowery language. Not necessarily that it's written bad. It's just, it's so much that it's like, girl, you spent three pages describing a desk. Like, move on. <laughs> so that's how I, I kind of felt for um Tamson Muir's writing I felt it was a bit too much but I have to preface it with this is not necessarily my genre that I love okay. so I could I could be the stupid one <laughs> <laughs> Jackie how did you feel about it I felt similar I felt that there were some parts that were really long in the way that she described very specifically everything so sometimes I was like oh my god are we are we done can we can you finish but so for me it was a little it was hard to to stay focused I I and that's just something that I struggle with sometimes when it's just so long-winded um but I I actually did enjoy the the dialogue especially from Gideon's side I loved all the shit that she said all, all the jokes she made I was like ah. I remember there was a couple of times where I responded in my head the same way she responded I was like yes yes so I I did enjoy the dialogue but I have to agree with Daniel that some of the descriptions were like girl mm -mm. you need to you need to tone it down Okay. And to talk about that, is sci-fi a genre you normally fall into? Or are you like Daniel, where you're less likely to pick up a sci-fi? I wouldn't say I normally fall into, but uh, towards the end of last year and some of this year, I have read a few sci-fi books and I really mm -hmm. love them. Um, actually, Daniel told me that you guys are planning on reading, I think you mentioned next year, uh, Legends and Lattes. Mm -hmm. And... I I read that one. I think I read it towards the end of last year or something, and I absolutely adored it. Um, so I think that sci-fi is probably a genre that I'm going to end up reading more often. Okay. All right, cool. I was asking because I think that is important. I am more into, I'm not more into, I, I read all kinds of stuff, but I do like sci-fi. I like it a lot. In fact, I'm the type of person that reads like Brandon Sanderson. Like I read his Mistborn series. And I would argue that you guys would probably hate him even more if you tried to read his book. <laughs> I say that only because if you don't like Gideon the Ninth, you wouldn't like Mistborn. And it's funny to me because Mistborn is actually a really popular book. A lot of sci-fi nerds read it and they love it. So to me, Gideon the Ninth actually fell into the much easier category of sci-fi. Oh, I no. read it and I was able to understand it. And it's funny that you guys say that you didn't, you thought she was too descriptive because I felt like I could have used more. <laughs> there were certain <laughs> moments, there were certain moments I was reading it where I was like, I'm not really sure what I'm picturing. And I wish she could have gone into a little bit more depth. Um, now, in regards to the dialogue, absolutely. Gideon 
became my favorite character from literally page one. I absolutely loved her. And yeah. we'll talk about that later because that's one of the questions. But in dialogue, I love the dialogue. I loved all the inner little like head things. Yeah. I found myself laughing out loud so many times throughout this book. <laughs> Me it was, too. It was awesome. And I personally, like I said, I could have used more description. But I do agree with you guys in this is actually something I talked to Daniel about. I think her actual biggest like I want to say her biggest um flaw if anything is that one she moves really fast but then on top of that um you're not really sure what you're seeing and I think that is where her writing fell for me because I was like I'm keeping up with you and I'm hearing like people talk and I'm watching people talk and have these discussions and I'm following them along fairly well but I am not seeing anything sometimes. There were moments where yeah. I was like, I'm just in a floating space right now. I don't know who, yeah. where we're at. This is just talking. And yeah. that I think is probably something that I found difficult with her. And that's where I was saying that for me, more description could have been better because I found myself like, what am I, what am I looking at here? And yeah. there were a lot of times where I think um, that there was if I could say anything about like her writing in particular, a lot of the time it was just like, um, this is something I loved and hated about her writing is that one, I did love that you kind of would just tossed in there. You're just like, this is the world. You don't get any other explanation. Yeah. yeah. But I actually did like that. But there were moments where it was like, okay, you kind of should have explained just a little bit more because I'm a little lost. So little I bit- kind of see where it can get confusing and where it, you can get lost but like I said I have read harder sci-fi this doesn't even hit that level <laughs> um, I mean for sure for sure at the beginning um and and I, I I agree with you that generally I like it when books just kind of throw you into the story you have nothing no background no context you just kind of figure it out yeah but I feel like at the same time with this kind of story there were some things that she should have explained yeah or um, at least like input in throughout mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. a little bit yeah a little bit more background a little bit I don't know a little bit more context for me as a reader because at the beginning I would say for at least the first four or five chapters I was like what the fuck is going on but but then you know as you go on you kind of start to get it but which was which was the fun of it but a little bit more context would have been good too no yeah. i completely agree with that talking about that with the beginning i found the beginning really bombastic and a fun ride and then i found after those initial first five chapters the story actually closes in in you know just one location so even with that happening there's no like when the story needs to slow down it really doesn't and it doesn't give exposition so I found that quite difficult okay um I'm not sure I felt that I can I can understand what you're saying though like I can I hear you and I I think I can see where you're saying that it does get a little like I guess that, that it all ends up in kind of one spot um I don't know. I, I didn't really feel that, though. I found myself kind of slogging at the beginning, but then towards the middle is where I found my interest in it. And that's where I really picked up and kept reading. And I, I think I had told you, I spent like two hours just reading nonstop. And I haven't done that in a long time, let me tell you. Um, no, I was, this one was slow. It was like two weeks, little by little each day. <laughs> like, I was like, it yeah. felt like trugging along. Yeah. No, it's yeah. funny. It's great that we all had like different experiences with it, obviously, you know. So I, like I said, and that's why it's also important to just kind of talk about the type of genres that we're into, because this yeah. does fall into the category of if you're not a sci-fi nerd, you're you're not going to like it as much as if you were. Um. So, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest aspect of it is that I did enjoy being thrown in because at the end of the day, it's a sci-fi story. So I hate personally hate 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 when an author just writes page upon page explaining everything about the where it started where it began how it ended. just shut up just take me through the story let's <laughs> figure it out as we're going i'm mm-hmm. fine with that 
I really enjoyed that part more because I don't like to just sit there listening to page upon page of that. But it could have used, like you were saying, could have used a little bit more of it just because of how intricate. Like one thing I can say about her is that she's got an imagination. I give she her really does. It goes, mm-hmm. it's like everywhere. And while I think that's great, I think she sort of forgets that we don't have her imagination. And yeah. we, we're not seeing or that we're not seeing. in her brain. Exactly. We're not seeing yeah. what she's seeing. So she kind of has to spell it out for us just a little bit more to really pull you in. Yeah. Um, all right. So now moving into my favorite question, which is who is your favorite character? And for me, uh, getting is top notch. I love her. And I absolutely adored her dialogue. I loved her reactions to everything, her way uh-huh. with everybody. Just the sarcasm was up through the roof. <laughs> and yes. I loved it. Yeah. What did you guys like? I also loved Gideon. Like Gideon for me, she was the best. I And I laughed out loud so often, especially in the way that she would describe the other characters like the one of the twins like she would always like describe her in a different negative way like she called her decrepit or dying or (laughs) you know all these things or or like the uncle from the eighth house like she would always call him something different because he was all like serious and kind of like weird looking like his complexion was like that like he was slowly dying and I just loved all the things that she said and the way that she thought or the way that she would get impatient about things that she just wanted to like swing her sword to solve the problems I was like I feel like that'd be me yes like that I'd be like no we need to stop we just gotta hit some things <laughs> with the sword just break something and we'll just yes. stop talking. <laughs> I loved I loved her so much and and I she was definitely my favorite character yeah what about you, Daniel? How did you feel? Did you have any yeah. particular Gideon, Gideon is the favorite character. Um, because she's like, I guess, the only one that stands out. There are a few characters that do, but they just don't have the time to be developed. It really is closed off to Harrow, um, or Harold, however you would pronounce it, and Gideon. Um, the the twelve year old dialogue, at least with Gideon, is not um my complaint i would say when other characters have the same type of humor when a lot of people start speaking the same is when i get thrown off gideon on the first half she had me towards the second half because she really wanted to just escape this life so at least with her still staying in this batshit crazy situation i was like i wanted her to leave Okay. <laughs> yeah, and then the love interest, well, kind of. The there Dulcinea? is not. Well, that that was just gonna add. Well, she had two love interests, which is two the love main interests. one, which is Harrow Hark, and then she yeah. had Dulcinea. So, speaking of which, what did you guys think of Harrow Hark, the other main character? Because she was technically they were both technically the main characters of the book. I was so up and down with her. Let me tell you, like, mm-hmm. at the in. <sighs> I just got to say, I love their, I ended up loving their relationship and their dynamic only because they had like this kind of like unspoken way of calling each other's bullshit out. Mm -hmm. Like whenever they said they hated each other or anytime that Haro would say that she never thought about her, like Gideon knew that that was bullshit, obviously they're always thinking about each other and they have this like love hate thing going on um which i loved but i i also feel like towards the end um haro kind of came full circle for me like she mm-hmm. she kind of redeemed herself in a way because of all the backstory you get of all her childhood what happened with her parents what she'd been through that she saw inside the tomb you know all these things that she was carrying said all the children like I was like girl you have so much like baggage in your soul I was like both do yeah (laughs) 
They both yeah, they do. Yeah, they both do. That origin and, section was really good. Yeah, yes. I really liked it too. Yes. It and comes I, very I, late, I also liked but... her. I think that probably she'd be my second favorite character. Um, kind of like tied with, I really loved Magnus and and like the teenagers at the beginning when they were first like how you yeah. would just hear the teenagers I, like in the background saying i like, loved it i loved like, it because no, at one man, point yes. <laughs> I, love them so say that. I love that so much they were i was gonna say they're my second favorite characters the twins yes. and magnus because that scene to me was beautiful it was so yes. funny because <laughs> i could just picture these two kids just being like no don't look at me oh, like, don't, don't talk don't about me that you're embarrassing me <laughs> I, I love, remember that. I love, I that, love that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really funny. I actually really liked them too. They were they were some of my favorites. Um, what about did we ask you, Daniel? I'm sorry, I don't know if you told us who your favorite was. You said you liked Gideon and you liked Hera Hark as well. No, um, uh, no, that um, it's because like she's so like this could go back to our likes and our genres because I know you and Jax. You guys are within romance. The trope you guys love the most are enemies to lover. Can that be? That well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, at least for you. And then Jax, do you like either best friends to lovers or do you like enemies to lover trope? I love both of those tropes, but I still really do enjoy enemies to lovers. Yeah, me, I find it a little bit toxic in where I don't like it. Because I mean, sometimes depends, Harold yeah. could be a little bit too disrespectful and yeah. too dismissive of Gideon that it's just, I don't feel a connection there. The only connection is through trauma. And it's like, Gideon, get out of there, girl. <laughs> get <laughs> out of there. Yeah, and then Harold is missing for a lot of the first chunk of the, the mansion or whatever. So uh, Gideon was the only one ke- keeping me, like, because I really love... That's one thing I could say. Characters I did like. I don't know. I, I, I can't really agree with you on that one because Harrow Hark and her had a relationship where they were both negative to each other. I yeah. mean, I never found Harrow Hark to be extra, like worse than Gideon herself. Gideon said some awful shit to her too. But I think that for me- But then Gideon that way. is coming from a place that she's technically a slave, like kept in that dungeon, uh, you know, and then she's- put the brunt of it all when yeah, but like if you think someone hates and it's you, also it's also like a class gonna... thing what? it's also a class thing because harold like if we because what i try to do with fantasy and sci-fi books is i try to correlate it with our world so at least for harold for me she's like a spoiled ass princess so it's like she's like higher class so she feels like she's more in demand while Gideon is our like, you know, surf not surface level, like starting level of like she's us, as in like the normal people. So that's why I also feel disconnect with that. At least with Harold is like she does explain it in the second half. It does get a bit better because they start to learn to trust each other, and you know, and then I, you know, her parents were horrendous to her. So I, I don't hate her completely. It's just, at least for relationship-wise, I felt like they didn't have too much of a connection. Okay. I guess for me, I'm thinking, like, if I think someone hates me, I'm not really going to react to them in a positive way either. And if we're biting back and forth with each other, then I'm just going to respond in kind. So that's why, for me, I didn't... I, I understood Hero in a way, um, because she kind of, like is under the assumption that Gideon hates her and then on top of that with the added trauma towards the end and Gideon can be a dickhead sometimes I mean you can't mm-hmm. take it away from her yeah so I mean I, I I guess for me it was just like yeah I mean if someone's being a dickhead to me I'm also going to be a dickhead back but I can see what you're mm-hmm. saying where it's like yeah she does have kind of the upper hand so it could have been it would have been on her I guess to be a little nicer um and maybe and maybe yeah, I can see where that could cause a disconnect for you. Yeah, like the yeah. one, the one that I did dig at least in the first half was Dulcinea. Dulcinea, yeah. Dulcinea, I did like their banter, and you know, but you know, this is kind of like a clue story, so I'm like, I feel like maybe, like I You're guess the villain the kind of. Okay. 
do say a lot that of start say, say that ending one more time. That I did, I did like their relationship and their banter a bit with Dusanea. Um, like I felt they had more chemistry, which is so funny. Right. But um, in my, but yet in the back of my mind, I'm like, don't get close to her because I feel like she might be the mastermind. Okay. So I wasn't, yeah. All right, so I, that's something that I can agree with as well about Dosanea. I did actually pick up on uh, pretty early in the book that she was going to end up being like n- either the villain or just a bad character in general um, pretty early on. So yeah, that was that was a pretty quick giveaway, I think. Um, it was still surprising the way it happened, though, but, but you know, I did pick it up early. What about you, Jack? you noticed that at the beginning? Did you know that Dosanea was going to be like the villain towards the end? She was definitely very suspicious, and I didn't really buy her, oh, I'm sick and dying spiel. Okay. Um, but, um, but yeah, there were definitely, and I just felt like the other characters or the other people from the other houses all had, like, solid alibis. Um, I mean, Palamedes, or I don't know if that's how you say it, but he, he, I really loved him and his, like, extreme moral character i was i was like this guy he wouldn't do the bad things <laughs> he's just gonna be doing the right thing his whole life um you know and and i just feel like everybody else had kind of like like they were too much into like the roles of their characters and she just seemed she just seemed like a bad apple honestly okay were you gonna say something Daniel? No, that even within her being one, the one of the villains, I still get confused by the end. Like I was talking to Jackie earlier about this because, like, at least for me, I always need a refresher with character names. <laughs> all of that. Okay. I'm like, especially in a fantasy sense. Um, so at least you know, is she the ultimate villain? Because that Jackie had confused me because her body is technically taken over, right? by yeah. the by the I mean, emperors yeah yeah uh by i think her name was uh Kitharia. she gets taken over by her um Christeria. uh well, no, that's she's says. not um she's not i mean technically dosane isn't the villain she's right uh, uh, being controlled by something else yeah yeah because that you see I that mean, confused me as well why and then were was uh magnus dead all along and then their bodies were being controlled from the beginning. I don't know. No, if it was, was Dulcinea's uh, cavalier. Yeah, that was it was, it was, yeah, it was Dulcinea's caval- cavalier. I forget his name. Hold on. Let's see I you also know. forgot his name. I right. just know he was the muscular guy. Yeah. But yeah, it was. Um, there was a little bit too much of like, it's not really this. It's not really this. But it's this, and it's I'm like I'm like I my head hurts. <laughs> 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 it was yeah it was uh i think his name yeah proto protosilaus was his name yes her cavalier was also dead from the beginning so basically yeah, yeah. their house in particular they were not really themselves yeah there's <laughs> nine houses yeah. with two people to each house so yeah. that's like 18 characters in a story well some, so I was some like, houses yeah, had me. sorry you guys hold on go ahead Sorry, that was me. Um, some houses had more than two people, I believe, because there were some houses that had like twins and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so their house in particular, yeah. So there's nine houses and Gideon's in the ninth house. Um, and then um yeah, the seventh house was being taken over by Kitharea and mm. um her cavalier had been dead from the beginning as well. So that's essentially what what we end up finding out like towards the towards the end um let me see i'm guessing what i could say really quick is that at least uh the whodunit murder aspect of it was what i didn't connect with or didn't love what i love the most that i can merit in this book is i did love the trials and of this you know discovering new powers mm-hmm. and finding the keys because it gave me like a an adventure a very like you know harry potter goblet of fire type you know task that's when i was having the most fun with the book okay 
Yeah, I can agree with that. I really enjoyed the the finding the keys and also fighting like the constructs was really fun. Yes. Yeah. And the magic system. Yeah, the and then learning like that she could use Gideon to be able to beat them and things like yes, that. Yes, was I was digging that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything to add to that, Jackie? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I really liked that. And I thought that was a great way to kind of strengthen their bond um, and just kind of make them more reliant on each other. Because I feel like, I mean, I honestly love and probably I shouldn't love it, but I love when they make characters be codependent on each other to survive. I I really love that kind of dynamic. Um, and I thought that that was just the best way to do it because they like she literally wouldn't have been able to do most of those without Gideon. Right, exactly. Yeah, they're kind of like forced to uh, admit that they need each other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um all right, so and speaking of that, I guess Daniel, you let us know a little bit of like the things that you enjoyed about the book, which is um the the fighting the constructs, the keys, anything the, everything yeah. like that. Is there anything else that was like something that you enjoyed about the books or was that mainly it the very very few action scenes i did like and i did dug but um yeah that's pretty much it that's all i like it's like gideon herself as a character she's funny she's lovable she's dorky then it's the the trials and the tasks and the magic scenes with the fighting scenes but then the the whodunit murder it closes the story a little too much I did like bits and pieces of all the other characters and I love some scenes, but I thought it was way too much characters that I just like, I'm like, who's this person again? You couldn't keep up. When I couldn't keep up. Okay. I couldn't keep up. And maybe that goes to Heather's point at first is that it's like, you know, a story about space. We're not in space at all. It's a very grounded story. So I just was like, super lost <laughs> yeah i guess my only like issue with with that is also but like if she was in space there would be even more characters to keep track of so i think staying in one spot and you still being confused i mean i think that kind of like um expresses that you know either way the way that she did it and the way that she um yeah writing track of the wild. characters the way that you had to keep tag of the characters is a little difficult. Um, I, I know for me, there were moments where I was like, oh, I forgot who this guy is. And, you know, I looked it up. But like I was saying at the beginning, that it's just such a standard for sci-fi that I don't I don't think about it anymore. That's because a gripe? In, yeah. A gripe I could say with like looking stuff up. It's okay to have a glossary. It's okay to have like all those things for fantasy and sci-fi, but don't put it at the end of the book. Because I get scared to go to the end of the book because I don't want to accidentally read the ending. So, like, at least if they're going to do, like, a glossary of characters, have it at the beginning. Like, be like, if you ever get lost, here's the, you know, index. <laughs> like, you know, here's the map. Here's the index. Here's the... It's because this one, I, I was telling Jackie, maybe in a visual medium for this story, maybe I'll dig it more. Oh, Things man, out. that was... That was definitely one of the points I wanted to make. I would love to see this one in like either an anime, manga, or like comic. Yes, style. for sure. This would be amazing. Oh my god, I would love especially drawn like the constructs and what they look like. That, yes. that if she ever decides to move it into a different medium, I think definitely in like uh, like anime, manga, that kind of stuff would would excel. It would be really cool, even in a comic book. It would be really cool. I think so too. It'd be amazing. I mean, imagine, especially the very, very gigantic bone constructs that yes. they describe as so huge. Yeah, that'd be so badass. Great video game. Mm -hmm. yeah. To yeah, look and see. There was definitely. Yeah. So I guess one of the things is that, like, so then you didn't like the setting, then Daniel. You wanted it to be actually in space. Yeah, because they were talking about like the nine houses. So I was in my mindset. I was going more Game of Thrones that we were going to visit different kingdoms. You know, because I didn't know what to expect at all. But for it to became became like a stale whodunit clue style murder mystery in a mansion, I was disappointed. Especially like I was saying, the beginning was so bombastic with the train and the fight scene between Harold and um, Gideon and just the action and all of that. And then it's just no action for like chapters and chapters. 
setting up the mansion, setting up the nine houses. They're all in one place. And then I just, I thought my mind did too many weird heavy lifting and no lifting at all that I'm like, I just didn't know what to expect. Okay. How did do you, uh, how did you feel about the setting, Jackie? I actually really liked the setting. I think it would have been a lot harder to keep track of everything if they had gone to all the nine like planets. Um, Is it planets? I think they're all houses. Do they live in different planets? I think they are because they travel. Uh, Yeah, that I don't. I couldn't say for sure. I don't know. At least in my mind, that's how I pictured it. They all lived in like a different planet of this solar system or system or whatever. Yeah, but um, that's how I because at them. some points they kind of described the homes of where these people lived as having like different different energies and in different like climates. So I just automatically assumed everything was in a different planet. Yeah, but Which are they in their wrong. own solar system? It might be. It might be like wrong. Well, supposedly the solar system, um, where they're at is the only one that supports like their necromancer ways or the only one that supplies them with energy to be able to be necromancers. Yeah, it states in the book, Nine Houses Territory only comprises the system, planets and systems of the Empire Shepherds. So these are just like, uh, there's just one location. So there are planets. It's one solar system. But it's like one solar okay. system. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but it's one planet? No, no, it's one with solar nine- system, several planets. And it's several what, planets. That's what I'm understanding. That's what I understand. And, but the ninth, the ninth house was never supposed to exist. Exactly. It then just it was it became to created. Yeah. Yes, but do they share a planet with another house? I don't no, think. They, or, they, oh, they have the planet that has the tomb, so yeah. they don't share it with anybody because you're, you're also oh, they just had a random okay. locked up and safe, yeah. and nobody yeah. visits them. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, no, but I, I like the setting. I think um, I think it it made it easier to keep track of. I I do wish I could have um, seen some of or read some of the like other uh, planets or the other places where they came from. Like they talk a lot about how privileged the fifth house is. So I feel like they live in a place that's like really full and thriving and 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 beautiful i would have loved to have to have read some of that uh but i didn't i thought it was pretty cool that they were all in like this haunted place and they were trying to figure out what was killing everybody i i like that aspect of it yeah um i would agree as well i think that for me the setting wasn't it wasn't bad for me i like that and uh, the other thing to remember is this is a series so this is not the first book there are other books and i think that if you're thinking about it in that sense this was the perfect setting to introduce us into because they're all in the same spot because if it it allows for then the next books for you to be able to move out of this space but you at least go into the next books knowing about the other houses and their characters and what they might be like so i think for me that's where i didn't have a problem with it because i knew there were other books in the series and i'm sure yeah. that if these other ones you're going to visit different places and she also I, from what i understand from reading some of the first book she also explains a little bit more the emperor and the empire and everything like that so yeah. i think that she was trying to give us enough to keep going but not um but not all of it not all of it at once because it's the continuation of what's going to happen. But, How many books um, are there? Do you know? I believe there three. Are three. It's a three, trilogy. Yeah. So I know that the next one is um with with Harold Hark at the beginning. Yeah. yeah, I read the first chapter, the one that's at the end of the book. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's, um, it started like a literal action movie. I was like, oh damn. Yeah. It's just <laughs> like holy shit. This is so wow. Okay. Yeah, action, she does well. Yeah, she definitely has a, a knack for action. Because I find sometimes with action, it's hard for me to keep track of what's happening, where everybody's moving. And mm-hmm. I, I felt comfortable with this one from time to time. Yeah. yeah. So what is the, did you like the the magic of the place? The the type of like things that they were able to do with their necromancy, the, the, yes. the, the dive into like basically like how they use the necromancy, things like that, especially when in regards to Dulcinea and how she was being used and things like that. What did you guys feel about the magic? I love that they all had like their specialties. Um, I love that there was so much diversity in everything that they did. Um, yeah, 
I did feel like it'd be kind of like messed up to be a necromancer because you got to be like sweating blood all the time. Yeah. Be like, uh, uh-uh, girl, no. <laughs> but, but I really, I really enjoyed the fact that they all had like their specialties and and their strengths and yeah. and that they kind of looked down upon the other people that did something different. Like, I, I liked one of the, one of Cytheria's lines where she was like, "Oh my God, can you do something other than bones? Stop being so predictable." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I like that. Um. I like that they all kind of like to and, and that they like to explore and 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 kind of master their specific abilities. Okay. Yeah, to piggyback off that. Yeah, I liked I liked the magic system and with the action scenes and all of that. And also the that it's they're all necromancers, but then there's like different, you know, forms of it. And it was just awesome to see that. And then with the descriptions, that's where she excelled in those scenes. Like when she describes the magic and like, you know, kind of like it turns into like x-ray and then Gideon could see the parts or, you know, I really dug that. That I really dug. And then the, uh, that Which, energy and Vita, Vita G? No, what was it? Who? Life. What was the life magic? What is that one called? Thalergy. Thalergy? Thalergy, yeah, there's two, no? Thalergy and Thanergy. Oh, so okay. Th- so, thanergy is the death one. Thalergy is the life one. Yes, okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, I would agree with you guys. I think that I, I enjoyed that, those aspects of the magic, too. Um, I definitely did imagine it to be very gross. <laughs> a lot of like the descriptions were just like that sounds absolutely disgusting. Yeah, but <laughs> I think I also like that about it because it wasn't clean magic. It was like this is nasty and you're gonna get dirty. <laughs> yeah. So there was something fun about that. Um, I guess moving on to then like the be like the deaths and everything that happened towards the end. Um. Uh, one question off of that I want to ask you like well I'll give the answer and then you guys can see if you have an answer to it but one of the deaths that made me sad first of all was when Magnus died immediately I read that and I went no Magnus. yeah because he was the most we were liking at least for me I was like I he was the only character that I could like see and you know envision it was just fun yeah and then and then when the twins died, I was so upset. I was like, no. And then I felt so bad for Gideon because she had to wake up to them being dead and her having yeah. like the, the guilt of I was asleep and I could have prevented this if I wasn't. It just I was so sad yeah. because I would say that like those were definitely some of my favorite characters. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely when when they found Magnus and Abigail dead, I was like, no no why they gotta go first and um and the way i mean the the boy teen the way he died was messed up but i feel yeah. like i feel like jen marie's death was more traumatic because she just woke up and she was there impaled in the bed i was like yeah. oh my god that must be so horrific to wake up to and and, and to not have been able to even do anything about it i <clears throat> those those three i think were like the saddest ones there were other deaths that i was happy about though i was <laughs> like, like Damn, finally you died <laughs> like who like when and i was not rooting for ianth to win when she finally became like the baby lictor that she finally ascended or whatever yeah. i really disliked her she was so annoying i was I like know. girl shut up <laughs> shut up so when when um when she was fighting the eighth house people um and and she ended up killing them i was like well fine they're stupid and when it was like revealed that she had eaten her cavalier i was like well thank god because he was the worst <laughs> He was so horrible. And honestly, I would have loved if Gideon had had the chance to beat him up. 
Because <laughs> I got that. like I wanted, I wanted a revenge to Just to, to the sparring. <laughs> yeah, I was like, she needs to fuck him up, but it never happened. But like that, those deaths I was fine with, and and um, and then when I was actually maybe I shouldn't have been, but I was actually rooting for Cytheria when she was fighting Ian. I was like, girl, fuck her up, like, t- like really? This long- <laughs> yeah, I was like. She needs to stop thinking that she's all that because she's That's not. That's so <laughs> funny. I can see that. I can see what you're saying, but I did not feel the same. I was rooting for Yanthe to win. I mean, I, was, I hate really. I hated, yeah, because I hated. I hated Katharia though. What she was doing, what she was doing, and why well, she yeah. did it. It was just like, it, yeah. you're, just, you're just a bitch, and I, I just I would want someone yeah. to kick your ass because she was also very like she thought she was the best of the best too. Yeah. So it was like they were both awful, but I just I hate. Katharia she's so yeah but at least but she I had been alive for like thousands of years she like she had earned her status this other girl had just become a lictor like five minutes ago and she was like I'm unstoppable no you're not no, yeah. no you're not I can see what you're saying but I can't say it <laughs> I was rooting for her but I, but I can understand that definitely well um, I mean and I was mainly rooting for her because I knew that that Hara was gonna win in the end like I just I felt it I was like there's no way she's gonna like she's gonna figure out how to beat her right okay I also felt sad about um Palamides when he kind of like gave him oh my god yeah I felt sad for that because he was so helpful from the beginning and he was just like the the he was he was a a level-headed guy and then also willing to like he kind of like he wasn't too much, not like Magnus, where he was just like, let me be helpful, super nice and whatever, because he still had his moments. But then, you know, he still wanted um, towards the end, especially to just like be a part of it, help each other out, knowing that there was a need for them to all band together instead of separate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was. He That was also a sad one. Is but the way bad? he did it, I was like, I damn, know. that's badass. Yes. That <laughs> is badass. Like bomb yeah <laughs> I he like blew dope himself dope. up i was like wow that's the way to go right there i know and then she yeah. started to regenerate herself and i was like god damn it <laughs> i know i was like no he did all that for nothing <laughs> <laughs> so in speaking of that i was gonna go into the next question of did anything frustrate you about the book and i will say that and now we're going into full spoiler territory right i will say that when she killed off Gideon, I got pissed. I yeah. got pissed off. I was going to mention that, yeah. Because I was like, what the fuck? The, you like, okay, yeah. so you have a lot of fun. Ca- For me, they were fun. I liked most of the characters. But, like, Gideon was the character. And you killed her off. <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> you literally killed her. Yeah. Uh, not now, that granted- I don't like Arrowhark, but, like, Gideon was, like, your meat and potatoes. She was your yeah, person yeah. to stick to. So it felt like the main character. Yeah. More than Harrow, at least for me. So um, you know, granted it is necromancy, so maybe Harrow could bring her back, but I, I don't know how that works. I I know, I know. Well, I'm just well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, I but I'm know. not reading the sequels to find out. <laughs> you'll you'll let me know if one of you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um. no, I think for me that was also very and and you could kind of see it coming like when she starts pacing and she's like and I'm like oh god she's gonna merge with her and force yeah. her to eat her or whatever and it was really sad it was like a really sad build up um, and, and it was just really sad to see how at first she kind of felt her in like occupying her body as well and then she slowly felt her kind of drifting off and moving on because I was hoping, I was like, well, maybe they'll both inha- inhabit her conscious and um, yeah, and she'll too. stay alive through her and, you know, they'll through talk her, to each yeah. other in her head. head yeah. Um, yeah, but no, she just, she killed her, killed her, and I was really sad about it. I mean, there may be some semblance of hope or something because they didn't find the body. The body, and, exactly. And they didn't find um, Camilla's body either, who who was another character I really loved. I thought she was super badass. Yeah, especially um, towards the end. Yeah. Yeah. She was yeah, she was, so, I mean, maybe there's some magical way. Um, 
but that was definitely frustrating. Another thing that frustrated me was we didn't really get a very, very detailed explanation of where Gideon came from. Like, we still don't really know who was her mom. How did she come to be? Where did she, where did she really come from? Why didn't she die from the mold? You know, yeah. why could she see the energy signatures in the air, even though she wasn't supposed to? There was a lot of things for me that were not explained about Gideon's character that I would have loved to have known. Like, I, I wanted all that background. I wanted to know what made her special. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have two more books. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> yeah. Anything because I guess that's you? what would... Yeah. That's that's what would frustrate me the most because I feel like even within a series of something, like I, everything should feel not wrapped in a bow necessarily, but everything should feel standalone within each book, at least some form of satisfaction, if that makes any sense, if I'm explaining myself right. So at least with Gideon and all of that, I just it's just felt I just didn't feel sa satisfied as a whole and that it throws all these things in to where you're like oh sequel baiting so it's like you know I have a frustration with that especially with epilogues but I, it was a trilogy from the beginning though which I should have like but it's like judging it from just one book it falls apart to me. But I guess as a trilogy, it works better. Right, right. Yeah. No, I, I can agree with you guys on that one, that there would have been, it would have been nicer to have more of Gideon. And honestly, like, so in, I, I don't know if you you guys um know like terms in like, especially the writer world, but in the writer world, there's a very, very specific um saying or phrase where it's like, you have to learn to kill your darlings which is basically you you learn to kill off characters that you yourself love, right? Like as a writer, you you write a character, you you love them, but you you not so much kill them actually, but just you have to get rid of scenes people that you really really love that you know are not necessary to the book or not necessary for continuation things like that. So, um I think that when I think about what she did with Gideon is that she took that phrase too far. <laughs> Because Definitely. she yeah. killed off her her darling, and but she killed off the darling of the of in book world. one. Yeah, yeah, and, and in a way that like it, I think that for me that might be my biggest gripe with it is that like if Gideon was in the next book, I would have picked it up much faster yeah. than now at the end where she's not. Yeah, exactly. Where for me, it's yet. like. I, yeah, no, like, I like these books a lot. Her. I like these books. I like this book a lot. And I would have kept reading. But now that Gideon's gone, like that pull to to want to read the next book wasn't there where it could have been, you know? Yeah. And I think that's where that's where definitely it fell short. Because at, at least even, you know, that me that I liked it. And I know that, you know, Daniel, you had a different feeling of it. But like I would have kept reading. I probably will pick up the next book just to see if I'm gonna like that one too. Yeah, yeah. Tell me but about it. <laughs> I, again, I would have picked it up much faster if Gideon had stayed. If she had yeah. kept, him. I, I kept her. I think that kid, killing her off was probably probably the the a dumb decision in my opinion. And let me know if it's a it's a if it's a false hearing. Let me know if she does come back. I could because only it's funny hope. that Jackie. <laughs> oh it's funny that Jackie mentioned all those things because I thought the same thing i'm like is she gonna come back as like a construct in her mind is she yeah. gonna come back as a voice no bodies when you don't see bodies i always suspect that in any form of genre you don't see the bodies no there's still like, hope yeah yeah there's still hope no body no hope. death <laughs> no <laughs> body no death exactly I can only hope that she's going to bring her back because to be honest, that would be the only reason to have kept going for, for me. Like, not the only reason. I liked the world and I liked everything else, but she was a big reason why I would have kept reading. Yeah. So I can't say that for me. That was kind of a dumb decision. But, but everybody, everybody's dead, no? Most, except Harold. Yeah, except Harold. Yeah, most well, of them are dead except Harold, yeah. And, yeah, the, yeah. and uh, I think that, no, yeah, I think everybody's dead. But that's the whole point. As Kitharea the reason that it happened was Kitharia wanted the emperor to come back. He was basically yeah. kind of like gone. He was off doing whatever. 
she he wasn't in their system because he's off doing something else and what Kitheria wanted was for him to come back she wanted revenge because she basically basically in her becoming her her taking in her cavalier she mm-hmm. thought that she was going to survive because remember her and Dulcinea had a similar thing where they both had a disease that was slowly killing them and Kitheria thought that in becoming what they would become which is a lictor taking in the soul of the cavalier that she would be able to continue living but what backfired for her is that she did continue living the only thing that it was with immense pain she was still yeah, exactly for what she for was thousands going of through. years or hundreds thousands hundreds, sure. but hundreds a long time she's been <laughs> suffering yeah and so thousands. like and for her, it was a revenge. She wanted the emperor to come back. So her point was to kill them off. She just luckily didn't kill off Harrowheart, who then is going to continue on. She is now an elixir and one of the yeah. only few people that can further kill off Kitharia in the yeah. next books. So that's kind of like what happens towards the end. And what the, that's setting up the events for the next book. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm just hoping that I mean, I'll probably end up reading the next one just because I'm curious yes. about <laughs> where no. it'll go, Hello, <laughs> what she'll do if Gideon's coming back. Because I mean, imagine if Gideon does come back, because Gideon's whole thing is that she can't die, right? Like, like she's not she she survives. So I just I have a lot of hope that she's still alive. I feel you. I will probably end up reading it too, and I agree. I think that. I think I liked Harrow Hark enough to keep reading her story as well because they were both similar in the sense that they were just sarcastic, funny characters, and you know they had a streak for, for thinking that they they could do things. You know they were always off to try and attempt, and you know I think that I liked that the most, and and I would probably still pick up the next books. But in talking about that, since we have a little bit of time left, let's uh, do a good wrap up. So any last thoughts and any, um, would you recommend this book to other people? How would you feel about recommending it to other people? Things like that. I think I, I probably, is... no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, the, uh, just that I find it niche. I would not recommend it to anybody. It would have to be the hardcore. This is like level 20, <laughs> hardcore sci-fi fans. Because if you're not hardcore, this is not one to handhold you into sci-fi slash fantasy. Like, I'm like, I can't, I can't, because I didn't even know what a necromancer no. was. She pushes so, like, me. I have to like, look those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, help, help. Yeah. Explain the. She world definitely to me. like, like in 300, Sparta kicks you into it for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I was already like, like hesitant. Because when people are like, oh, you'll start to understand the third read through. I'm like, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. So I don't highly recommend it. I okay. only for hardcore niche. Like this is like, you know what necromancers are. Like you, you love and breathe all this fantasy. Then yes. Okay. Jackie. I mean, I probably would. Um agree with most of that I don't think it's a book that I would say to everybody that I know to read it um I if I and if I do tell someone to read it I'd probably tell them you know this is a sci-fi book in case you're not into that or you know so that they can be prepared and also that it starts off slow because it did it did start off slow for me for me at least when I got to 50 percent through that's when everything was like when I was in it and I was like yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's definitely a specific audience that would love this. Okay. Yeah, no, I agree with the both of you, actually, very, very much so. I agree that it's not a book for everybody. If you're a sci-fi nerd, definitely it's a book that I, I think you you should read it. If you're able to keep up with like Brandon Sanders' Mistborn and, and you know, um, Aragorn, things like that, I think you can keep up with this kind of book. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend it to the average reader. You kind of have to like really enjoy like, like you know, like Daniel's Reading. glossaries and, you know, going back and forth and what does this mean? And yeah, like if you want to, if you like research and things like that, yeah, this is going to be the book for you. But if that's not the stuff you're into, then yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a more difficult read. Um, So I agree that it's not a book that I would recommend to a lot of people. But 
if you're a sci-fi nerd i think that you should give it a shot i think it would it's likable the characters yeah. is definitely likable i think everybody i personally loved everybody i really didn't have a problem i thought she great created characters that were really like funny and interesting for me i, I like them and i would have kept reading just with these characters alone like doing things that's how i yeah. feel. but um i know that you know obviously not not everybody is going to feel that way um but yeah, I guess that's it. That's pretty much the end of our our review of Gideon the Knife. We went through a lot. We talked about a lot. I think this was pretty good. Um, and then I believe for our next read, we're going to be doing the ninth house for April. So mm-hmm. I'm excited for this one. This is kind of like a dark academia, kind of like scary vibes, ghost story kind of thing. Yes, and um, this one feels more thriller. Mm-hmm. like thriller genre and plus it's here on earth <laughs> so i think i'll enjoy it more <laughs> yeah yeah it's kind of like your dark academia just you know fun scary story you get to have like some interesting characters and um they basically go i, I don't even i'm not sure entirely what it's about but what is that oh that's right that's from the same author trilogy over, right yeah i have yeah. i don't have that one i haven't read that one shut up though it's a Netflix series, so I wanted to, <laughs> you know, I wanted to That's check it out. That's where I know it from. Yes. Like, but it's the, I didn't know, I did not know it was the same author. Yeah. So I'm like, oh shit. So I got, like, I have two from her. I've heard Shadow and Bone is pretty good, too. Um. All right, then. So yeah, so that is our April book. Thank you guys so much for joining us uh, this book review with Kitty in the Ninth. Let us know in the comments if you read it, if you liked it, how you feel about it. Did you hate it? Did you love it? And, you know, give us any info that you want to. And remember to suggest us any books that you might want us to read or talk about in the upcoming um, episode. And I guess that's it. We're out. I was Heather, Daniel, Jackie. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having me.